loss for the Rays in their first ever appearance at Dodger Stadium last night. Today, first place L.A. looks for their fourth straight win. It's time for the Rays and Dodgers. Matt, even in Hollywood, you can't make this stuff up. The Rays and David Price had a 6-1 lead. Fernando Rodney trying to close it. The Dodgers rally with four runs, and that's how it ended in the ninth inning. Adrian Gonzalez scoring the game winner. The Dodgers knock off the Tampa Bay Rays, the Rays' first ever visit to Dodger Stadium, and the series continues today. Welcome to Fox Saturday Baseball, the second place Rays of the American League East against the first place Dodgers from the National League West. I have Chris Myers, and glad you're with us. A real treat today, some of the performing players. In fact, in the last 43 games, the Dodgers have won 35 of those. They've gone from last place to first place, and certainly as we welcome in Eric Carros here, going back to June 22nd, the Rays and the Dodgers are the two best teams in baseball. We know the centerpiece is pitching, but a couple of 22-year-old rookies got the party started. Well, a lot of similarities between these two ball clubs, but for me, the thing that's made the most impact has been the two young players, Yasiel Puig of the Los Angeles Dodgers and Will Myers of the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, you look at those numbers right there. Those are tops among other rookies in their respective leagues. First in on average, first in on base percentage, and first in slugging percentage. Now, they do it in a little different way. Yasiel Puig does it with a ton of energy. He's running all over the place, a very exciting player. Will Myers, very calm, cool, and confident. I can't wait to watch these two this afternoon. The Tampa Bay Rays, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Two hot teams, two teams that could possibly meet in the World Series in October. We have them this afternoon for you straight ahead. It's Major League Baseball on Fox. Otherwise, just another perfect day in L.A., mid-70s and sunny. The opening pitch brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Let's check our starting lineups. And for the Rays, brought to you by Taco Bell. 
Sometimes you got to live on. Fifth in the American League at batting at 263. They were 240 last year, so they've improved that with Ben Zobris leading off. Desmond Jennings still on the injured list. Will Myers, the rookie that Eric Carros talked about batting cleanup. James Loney, the former Dodger at first base. Yunel Escobar, who's been terrific for this team, and the veteran catcher Jose Molina and Roberto Hernandez batting ninth, pitching on the mound for the Rays. And facing Zach Ranke, 29-year-old Dodger, who upped his record to 9-3 and three with a victory over the Cardinals on Monday. It was his 100th Major League victory. Hey, he's been real good for the Dodgers this year, and you can tell early on if he's down in the zone, able to work both sides of the plate, that's where he becomes very effective. He's up, and he's, especially on a day like this where the ball is going to carry, could run into some problems. Checking the defense behind him, Eric. Go from left to right with the X-ray, Carl Crawford, and Andre Ethier in center where he's had to play since Matt Kemp has been on the disabled list three different times. The exciting rookie, Asiel Pui, in right. Now, Hanley Ramirez available to pitch it. Nick Punto is the shortstop for Don Mattingly, who weathered the rough start. And then Joe Madden in his eighth season running the Tampa Bay Rays, twice a manager of the year. Look at this, the Deo Nomo, bobblehead day here at Dodger Stadium, his great career with the Dodgers, and Eric Karros catching behind the plate. Yeah, Nomo had a great career here, really the pioneer for a lot of players to come over and play Major League Baseball. Yeah, a lot of guys follow, each row most notable, but what a great teammate. And finished his career as a member of the Tampa Bay Rays. Well, Ben Zobris, the longest tenured Rays player, even going back, he actually wore a Devil Rays uniform, if you remember when, leading it off at the first pitch. First place Dodgers, second place Rays from Great. And that is fouled off. The Dodgers have made up 50 games in 50 days. The way they won last night in the first game of this series, typical of the way that they've been winning. The Rays have stumbled lately with three straight losses. The 0-1. Well, I, I know we highlighted some players, the young players, Yasiel Puig and Will Myers at the top of the show, but the success both of these teams are having, team success. I mean, you get contributions from everyone up and down the lineup. It's pitching one night, defense hitting. That's what's been so special about each of these teams' runs so far. Swung on miss, and now one and two. The versatility of a number of the Rays players. Well, this is the curveball off speed. Zobris way out in front. And Granke worked into the seventh inning, allowing eight hits and two earned runs when the Dodgers beat the Cardinals. That was their 15th straight road win. Now back home. Worked both sides of the plate in that game. Bouncer second. And Skip Schumacher gets the out at first. Matt Joyce steps to the plate. Time for our forward keys to the game. Well, for the Tampa Bay Rays, Roberto Hernandez has to keep the ball in the park. He's given up the most home runs on the Rays staff. It's a day game here. Ball will carry. Dodgers very simple right now. Get it to Kenley Jansen, the excitable outstanding closer right now for the Dodgers. And the bullpen of the Dodgers has been outstanding getting it to Kenley Jansen during their turnaround. Joyce takes the first pitch and they check. Angel Hernandez so he didn't go so it's 1-0. and In his career Joyce 6 for 15 with a homer against Zach Granke. That's a strike. Well, he sees the ball well off Granky. Joyce, though, not having a, a year that he had expected. Average is down. The home runs are there, but he hasn't been the offensive force that Joe Madden would have hoped up to this point. In his fifth year with the Rays, is Matt Joyce. So far, a lot of off speed pitches. Granky throwing the change up, the curve ball. Not relying on the fastball yet. Stickers on the fingernails of catcher A.J. Ellis. Hello.
Evan Longoria, long a staple in the Tampa Bay Rays. Waiting to get his chance. He's from Downey, California. Before last night, his only Dodger Stadium appearance had been in the World Baseball Classic. Excited about this weekend. The one two to Joyce. Well, there's that fastball right there. Shows you at 95 miles an hour when you're seeing a ton of off speed and then you see something like that. You can tell by the way Joyce went after that. It just seems like it's coming at about 150. Outside. Now two and two. That pitch only about 86 miles per hour. And, and that's a, the key to to getting a hitter out is, is to disrupt his timing. And that's what you try to do when you have the differential on off speed and fastball. Fouled off again by Joyce. And, and you know the, this at bat right now, whether he gets on or, or, or gets out. You know, it's going to be a minimal of seven pitches, and that is a, a productive at bat. He's he's made Granky throw some pitches. He hasn't been a one, two, three out. You know, there are things as productive outs. That's possibly what we're looking at here. A uh, two, two toward right center field, and it drops. Cut off by Ethier going to second, and in there safely. A one-out double by Matt Joyce. Well, Joyce continues his success against Granke. This pitch out over the plate. Drives this to right that center. Ethier hustles the over there. But Joyce from the get-go has two on his mind. He hustles in there, gets there easily. Punto trying to catch the ball and apply the tag all in one motion. And now Evan Longoria, who leads the team in home runs and runs battered in. Went to St. John Bosco High in Bellflower, Southern California. Guys said he grew up closer to where the Angels played. Saw more of their games, but was a bit of a Dodger fan. And actually, when I asked him his favorite Dodgers, Sean Green and Raul Mondesi were the first two that he mentioned. But trying to give the Rays an early lead. Of course, they had a 6-1 lead last night. Their two best pitchers out there and couldn't hold it. Ethier straightaway center. Longoria hitting about 250 with runners in scoring position. Hasn't had a, a great year in that capacity. Still, though, a, a threat any time he comes to the plate. Batting average has dipped for him since early July. Fouls it off. One for four last night and scored a run, but there's the the slump for Evan Longoria. Yeah, it went in a real stretch where he just couldn't get any hits, and with he also was during that time it, it, striking out a lot. And that's something. Speaking to Joe Madden prior to the game, in, in general, not a big fan of offensive strikeouts. And said this is the best offense this Rays team that he's ever had yep. in Tampa Bay because the team doesn't strike out a lot. And right on cue, Longoria couldn't hold up, and there's the strikeout. This pitch out of the zone, even if Longoria does make contact, probably not able to hit that well. Excellent pitch by Granke. Center fielder, number nine, Will Myers. So two out and a runner in scoring position for the rookie, Will Myers, who since the All-Star break leads the majors, not just rookies, the majors batting 4-31. Also leads in slugging percentage. In there for a strike. Look at why he doesn't wear batting gloves. One of the few major leaguers. As he looks at this. Yeah, old school guy. No, no batting gloves. You look at that pitch. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. If you're on the mound. You want that up at the plate. You're saying, man, I. I got to get a little more white on that plate there. The 0-1. That's inside. 
Let's check the player profile brought to you by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. Well, and we showed some rankings at the top of the show, and those were rookie rankings. You look at that, what he's doing across the league. I mean, those numbers are compared to everybody, and he's first. Joyce with a one-out double. Longoria struck out. Now Myers wants to step out with a 1-1 count. When Will Myers was called up June 18th, the Rays were two games above 500, and now they're 18 games above, even though they've lost the three straight. So he's had the kind of impact that Yesiel Puig has had for the Dodgers. He's in the hole here, one and two. Well, he's just become another centerpiece in the middle of the lineup. See that pitch very similar to the one that Brinky got Longoria to offer at. Joe Mann didn't hesitate putting him in the cleanup spot when he called him up. Well, and he wasn't shy about asking to hit in the cleanup spot. Felt very confident hitting there. Has reached base, as you saw, in 22 straight games. Two for four last night. Hesitates. And now a 2-2 count. We take a look at it here. and Could go either way. Looks like he, he may have held his swing. Didn't notice the pitches, though. The last two both out of the zone. Granky not even messing around. He's got first base open. Does not have to throw a strike. And if he does, it's going to hit a corner. Granky's 21st pitch coming here in this opening inning. The 2-2 to Will Myers. Goes back out there again with the off-speed pitch. Those 22 straight games, second most by a Rays rookie. 24 the team record, but here he's more interested in getting getting on or getting the runner home. Rocco Baldelli, I believe, has that record. That is correct. There's a, there's a name you don't throw out very often, especially in the first inning of the game. Cranky having to work here. You know, Will Myers was telling me that he uses his first at bat as a learning experience. He's not a video kind of guy. You know, he's more like you said, old school. And I said, well, you're learning on the job with your first yeah. at bat against Cranky. You can see studying here at the plate. And Granke wins that battle against the rookie. The Rays threaten but do not score as Granke gets his second strikeout of the inning. We're scoreless. The Dodgers coming to bat.
Rogers brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live moss. Second in the National League, hitting 266. Adrian Gonzalez, Don Mattingly called him the team MVP, hits third, followed by Pui, Ethier, Juan Uribe, Schumacher at second, A.J. Ellis, and Zach Frankie, who's a terrific hitting pitcher. That's ninth against Roberto Hernandez, once Fausto Carmona at age 32. He's won two of his last three decisions, but 6-11 on the year with an ERA up near five. Yeah, the only member of the starting staff of the race to have a losing record. He's a ground ball pitcher, but he has given up the most home runs on this staff. And in two of those last three decisions, he has lowered his earned run average by nearly a run since the end of May. Last pitched on Sunday against the Giants. Couldn't get out of the fifth, allowing three earned runs in what was a no decision. Stepping in is one time Tampa Bay Ray, Carl Crawford. Crawford hot in the last couple of weeks, has had to battle a little injury. Recently celebrated his birthday at age 32. His 12th year in the major leagues and the ideal leadoff man for this team, says Mattingly. As a member of the Rays, he is their all-time leader in hits, stolen bases. Six categories when you count them all up. Very popular player, even in the lean years, he held up well. Yeah, very productive player. Took his talents to Boston. Then found his way over here last year in the big trade. Adrian Gonzalez, Josh Beckett, Carl Crawford. Always nice when you're out there catching this ball off the right foot, the big toe. That's why Jose Molina looks like some kind of Star Wars uh, superhero character with all that gear on. Golly. And that's what's so tough. You, you take those bumps and bruises, and yet you still got to go out and hit. And any catcher that puts up offensive numbers, wow. And he is the catcher that Hernandez is most comfortable with. A nice work by Hernandez, getting Crawford waving at that pitch for the strikeout. And Nick Punto. Well, this is that sinker, and it just runs away. It runs out of the zone, and that's when he's at his best. He is a sinker ball pitcher, but again, when he gets that ball up, that ball will travel. Here is Punto, who's played all over the shortstop in the lineup. Two for five, uh, had an RBI last night. Hernandez, it's an amazing story when you think that he used to be Fausto Carmona. He used that birth certificate, which made him three years younger. Became a star for the Cleveland Indians in the major leagues. Was an opening day pitcher, pitched in the postseason for them. Fouled toward right field. And once it was discovered, and this was in January of 2012, then he was not allowed into the U.S. from the Dominican Republic until July, had to serve a three-week suspension. Once they sorted out the legal process, got his proper age and identity, went back to his real name, Roberto Hernandez. And the Indians didn't sign him, so the, the Rays stepped in, took a look and added him to their roster. But there is no more Fausto Carmona. It's still a live arm, though. A lot of movement on his pitches. Ray's hoping to recapture that talent he had in Cleveland. Bouncer second. Zobrist. Safe. Zobrist does a nice job of getting over there, but watch when it bounces out of his glove. It almost lands on his hip. He has to re-grip it, get it over there. James Loney makes a heck of a stretch, but Nick Punto hustling all the way. See where it shoots out of the glove, doesn't keep it cleanly in that leather. Not able to get the speedy Punto. Look at a little Pete Rose effort down there, <laughs> that head first. Look at that. Even getting some air. Oh! You a fan of the head first slide? Big fan of Pete Rose, not of the head first slide, though. See, it worked this time. Punto now 9 for 21 against... Roberto Hernandez slash Fausto Carmona. Now Adrian Gonzalez comes in. Batting average has dipped a little, but he scored that dramatic run last night. Throw down to first. Molina not afraid to throw behind the runner. Again, not so much trying to pick Punto off, but just get him a little closer. You see that shift with Adrian Gonzalez at the plate. 
The shortstop Escobar almost behind second base. Longoria way over in that shortstop spot there. The 0-1. The Rays had a runner at second, Joyce in the opening inning on a double, but after a couple of Granky strikeouts, nothing happened here. The Dodgers with one out and one on for Gonzalez, who really carried the team on his back in those first few months when. Toward right, it's up, it's out, and a home run, Gonzalez. Well, you hit it right on the head, Chris, when you're talking about the most consistent player, the man that's carried this ball club from start to finish. We talked about it at the top of the show. One of the keys for the race, you've got to keep that ball in the park. Although Carmona is a ground ball pitcher, he got this one up. Gonzalez put it out. 12th home run of the year for Adrian Gonzalez and the Dodgers. With a 2 0 advantage here as Yasiel Plea comes to the plate. Since he came up June 3rd, leads Major League Baseball with a 379 average. And when he swings at the first pitch, he's on 75% of the time. Look at that pitch. That was down, but you always hear about that hot zone for a left handed hitter. Down and in. That's where Hernandez threw it. He put it in the seats. Looked a little bit the swing anyway, similar to last night against Rodney in the ninth when inning. he hit that double. Yeah, he yeah. had to dig down and dig it out. Well, that's probably not a spot you want to throw Adrian Gonzalez right now. Puig with 85 hits since he came up in June. And has showed a little bit more patience. Don Mattingly was saying about just getting a few more walks, maturing a little bit, showing his his smarts at the plate. Well, and the book on him is he is an aggressive hitter. So you want to expand his zone, and if he continues to swing at stuff out of the zone, keep throwing it out there. The, the thing for Puig that, that that has interested me so far is he can look so bad on a pitch. I mean, almost like that. Oh, holy! Uh. And then the next one, he'll shoot it to right center. He'll hit a line drive. Defense is relatively straight up, although they are very deep, especially in the infield. And it's ironic, too, because Puig, I believe, 17 infield hits this year. You know, some of those are bunts, but a lot of those just flat out he doesn't hit it well, and his speed takes over. He can beat out a routine grounder to short for a base hit. Now a full count. Hernandez gets Gasiel Puig. Talked about sometimes looking ridiculous. Center fielder, number 16, Andre. But, but he, the, this pitch is an off speed pitch. Took a little off about 85. He got Puig out in front. But that's the thing about both of these young hitters, Puig or, or, or Myers with, with Tampa Bay. They can look bad in a at bat or two, but you have to face them four times. You get two hits, yeah. hey, all's good. And a man in that position cannot afford to be made to look ridiculous. They usually get their second, third, fourth opportunity. And we'll see quite a bit of Puig and Myers today. Here's Andre Ethier, was rested last night. Back in the lineup in center field. Well, you mentioned Ethier getting the day off last night or the night off. They got in from St. Louis, the ball club, at around 4 in the morning. Andre Ethier had a charitable event at noon. Yeah, thanks for that. Got a night off last night. He's ready to go today. 
That's one of the things that Don Mattingly has done well is he's allowed his players or got his players rest. You know, by doing that, not only does he rest players, but he gets others at bats. So when he calls on them, they've got a bit of experience. A strikeout to end the inning. And after one, 16th home run of the year for Adrian Gonzalez. His two-run shot that he went down and got has the Dodgers. And Zach Greinke with a 2-0 lead. Twenty thirteen Ford F one fifty with EcoBoost and by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live months. Along with Eric Harris, Chris Meyer, second inning here at Dodger Stadium. And thanks for being with us. Zach Granke facing one-time Dodger James Loney, who swings and sends it toward left, chasing it down as Crawford for out number one. Yunel Escobar stepping to the plate. Had a couple of hits and drove in three in last night's tough Rays loss. There's a mini six game hitting streak going. Well, Joe Madden telling us prior to the game he's really liked the way Escobar has played this year and has had as big an impact as any other player. Saying if he didn't get off to such a slow start, everybody would be ranting and raving about what a nice year he's having. Speaking about his tremendous defense, the one time Brave and Blue Jay shortstop. Fouls that up, was traded went to Miami, but actually never played for the Marlins. And he's a centerpiece to what Joe Madden wants to do, especially up the middle defensively, and has talked about his power and key hits. One and one. Inside, Kelly Johnson do up next. One out here in the second inning. First time that the Rays have ever played out at Dodger Stadium. They played six previous games, were three and three. All of those were in the Tampa St. Pete area. This is a three game series. 
Bounce toward third. Uribe, long throw, got it. In his first year with the Rays, Kelly Johnson, 16 home runs. Back in 2010 for the Diamondbacks, he hit 26. In the outfield for the Rays, has played a lot of second base as well. And he's up there against Granky, taking a strike. Interesting today, Ben Zobrist at second base. Last night he was in left field. Today, move him there. Johnson, instead of playing second, you put him in the outfield. Joe Madden has a lot of versatility with his ball club. Johnson in the hole here, 0 2. Of the 29 pitches for Granke so far, 21 have been strikes. Foul to left. For Granke, this is his 12th career start against Tampa Bay. He's only two and six. The ERA is pretty good, 3.70. But his teams have been shut out three times for Rays pitching. He's actually lost his last two times that he's gone up against the Rays. There's Rick Honeycutt, who since 2006 with the Dodgers, uh, they've had the best ERA in all of baseball. Whatever staff he's worked with here in blue. The one two from Granke. Foul back. Should Johnson reach, it'll be Jose Molina. And then the pitcher, Roberto Hernandez. Granke looking into AJ Ellis. Here comes the curve. Bouncer second, Skip Schumacher, and that's it for Zach Rinke and the Rays. We go to the bottom of the second inning. Beautiful day in Southern California, and the hometown Dodgers coming to bat with the lead. The official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some bugs. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything we've learned making tires for a range of conditions inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear. 
more driven. We welcome you back here at Dodger Stadium where Juan Uribe steps in against Roberto Hernandez. Uribe drove in a run last night, the 34-year-old veteran of 13 Major League seasons, his third with the Dodgers. He's one of the closer friends along with Hanley Ramirez of Yasiel Puig, hoping to provide some tutelage for the 22-year-old hotshot rookie. Bouncer towards second. Zobrist throws him out. Skip Schumacher. Dodgers second base. up to the Dodgers. Skip Schumacher. Along with Nick Puto. We mentioned Adrian Gonzalez, one of the regulars, but Schumacher and Puto, who weren't supposed to be everyday players, were for the first few months of the season for the Dodgers. Yeah, jokingly, they had to go back in and renegotiate with general manager Ned Coletti. They came here as guys that were just supposed to fill in, but because of injuries, they've really been thrust into a role where they've had to play a lot of innings, and they've done a very good job. He had a couple of hits last night, part of that rally in the ninth. Dodgers trailed 6-1, cut it to 6-3, and then with Rodney in to close it out, they got four runs and won 7-6 to take the first of this three-game series. Well, Schumacher can play in multiple of positions. He's from St. Louis. He has good pedigree. Born in Los Angeles in Torrance. And just one of those guys, he's a grinder. He's a baseball player. He and Punto are the same type of mold. A key member of that 2011 Cardinals World Series team at 381 in the postseason. How's that one off? And this Dodger team, the, the, it's we forget seven weeks ago, Eric, they were 12 games under 500, nine and a half out in last place. Now they're 15 above and have a five and a half game lead. Well, and there was a lot of talk of that man right there, whether or not Don Manley was going to retain his job. And to the rescue, Puig came and Andre Ethier started playing well. And Base hit right field. Schumacher is on. Hanley Ramirez, a healthy Hanley, part of that resurgence. Number 17, A.J. Ellis. A.J. Ellis to the plate. Let's check in and we welcome Ken Rosenthal. Hey, Ken. Hey, Chris. Zach Greinke is famously blunt, and A.J. Ellis found this out the hard way during a Sunday afternoon at San Diego. This was during the time when the Dodgers were struggling. Ellis wasn't playing that day, and he said to Greinke, hey, let's figure out how to make this team better. Zach told him, let me think about it. And about the fourth inning, he turned to Ellis on the bench and said, the first thing I'm doing is trading you and signing <laughs> Brian McCann as a free agent this offseason. Well, the two have been joking about it ever since. And Ellis calls Greinke the most refreshing teammate he has ever had. Runner goes, throw it out. Schumacher is going to be thrown out. An aggressive move with a patient hitter at the plate. Yeah, Molina, though, living in that legacy of great throwing catchers. Right on the money right there has Schumacher dead to rights there. And you see Schumacher looking in. That, that looks to me like there's a missed sign right there. That's probably a hit and run in that spot. Bouncer third, Longoria. And whatever the Dodgers had going, it evaporates in a hurry. We've gone through two. Dodgers with a 2 nothing lead. The Rays are coming up.
Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, celebrating a new season for memories and for your chance to win a community field makeover, an all-new 2014 Impala. Visit ChevyBaseball.com. Jose Molina leaning off the third against Granke. Rays got a double from Matt Joyce in the opening inning. Couple of strikeouts so far for Granke and for Molina. Of course, one of the Molina brothers, Benji and Yadier. 14th major league season. And what's interesting uh, about having three brothers playing in the majors, 18 times that's happened, each of them have two World Series rings. In there for a strike. Roberto Hernandez due up next, and then back to the top of the order and leadoff man, Ben Zobrist. If you tuned in a little bit late, Adrian Gonzalez with a two run homer in the opening inning for the Dodgers. Wow. That looked like a real good pitch right there, especially with Granky showing. Very good control. Let me look at this again. And if I'm pitching, that's a strike. If I'm hitting, I'm saying to Paul <laughs> Newart behind the plate, thank you very much. But 2 2 and fouled off. Well, Jose Molina is known for framing pitches, you know, that catching technique to try and coerce strikes. You can see A.J. Ellis just holding Hold it there. the glove. He didn't even have to bring it back over the plate. Wanting that home plate umpire to call it for Rick Honeycutt. Blue skies and blue magic, the way the Dodgers have been going lately. Bouncer short. Poto gets him for out number one. Let's get an MLB Network Studios game break and Matt Vaskersian. Hi, Matt. Hey, Chris. Uh, orange and black in both dugouts up in San Francisco this afternoon. And Chad go down experiencing the joys of pitching to a lineup where the pitcher has to hit way in chin doesn't swing the bat very often grounds out with the bases loaded scoreless in San Francisco back to you guys in L.A. Thanks Matt and the pitcher having to hit here something I know that Joe Madden says just a different kind of lineup and with Roberto Hernandez up at the plate he's looking for his first ever major league hit he's yeah. 0 for 17 in his career yeah, and, and that 0 for 17 10 of them are strikeouts. We're one pitch away from seeing number 11 here, Chris. Frankie's not wasted any no, time. He did not. It's Ben Zobras. The 0 2. Wasted one. The career futility 0 for 41. Randy Tate, who pitched for the Mets back at 75. That's a pitcher starting out looking for his first major league hit. And there he stepped away from strike three. Third strikeout for Granky. Here's the breaking ball. Don't get in that box too often. That can scare you. It got Hernandez. America's new sports network is almost here. Fox Sports One, your home for live sports, live shows. The crowd goes wild. Fox Football Daily, Fox Sports Live, highlights. A 24-hour alternative. A week from today, it's America's new sports network, Fox Sports 1, just seven days from now. How about some of the talent they've hired over there? Brian Erlacher, Chris Chelios, Andy Roddick. Ronde Barber, Donovan McNabb. Chris and, Myers in there, too, so, or what? Well, I, was ta I was talking to Regis <laughs> Philbin. We were, we, were talking about, uh, <laughs> we were talking about the art of interviewing. You know, his first interview going way back, Ben Hur in a race. I'm kidding, of course. <laughs> and that's in there for a strike. Ben Zobris grounded to second in the opening inning to get things started. We well, get a little bit of everything at Fox Sports 1. Wow, those are a couple pitches right now that if Zach Greinke was all over the place, I can understand not getting those, but he's shown pretty darn good control, and 
when you're hitting your spots, the umpire behind the plate will usually give you those pitches. Base hit right field. Zobrist is on with two out. Second hit of the game for the Rays. Zobrist does a nice job there. Ball's up in the zone. And see Zobrist right after him and keeps that bat level through the zone. Here's Matt Joyce who doubled first hit of the game for the Rays. Should he reach Evan Longoria would get an opportunity. And you got to watch Zobris at first. He's second on the team in stolen bases. Got nine. Only been caught once. And the team doesn't run a lot, but he's one of the guys that does run well. Swung on. Matt Joyce, a local guy born in Tampa, went to Armwood High School in nearby Sefner. And part of that lineup that has been juggled with. There's Zobrist at first. And Granky think of the same thing you are. Well, Granky very athletic. He's tough to run against. AJ Ellis has been stellar behind the plate as far as throwing runners out. Holds up. I mean, not the time to, to run, really, for me in this situation for a couple of reasons. You've got the left handed hitter, Joyce, up. You've got the middle of the lineup following. But you wonder how many opportunities you get with Granky. Do you sometimes need to force the issue? Well, um, you, you could do something now. You've got two strikes, and the thinking now is if he does steal the base. Be safe. You got a runner in scoring position. If you don't, then you if you get caught, you've got Joyce leading off the next inning with Longoria and Myers following. And AJ Ellis leads the majors in throwing out runners at 44%. Yeah, it's not a good combo to run against. He does not go foul ball. Ranky is from, they say Orlando, but Apopka, Florida. Went to Apopka High. It's the alma mater of Warren Sapp, who, the great Buccaneer who just went into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the class of 2013. And a very studious approach to pitching. Zach Ranky carries that with him. You heard Ken Rosenthal talk about the sense of humor he has. Talking about, about trading A.J. Ellis for Brian McCann. Runner goes, swung on and foul. Again, the, the combination, Granky and Ellis, it's not a good one to run against, but the thinking there, if you do send Zobris, it's really a no lose situation because if you do get thrown out, like I said, you've got Joyce leading off the next inning with your power guys, Longoria and Myers following. He's safe, you got a runner in scoring position. And the way Dodger pitching has been going. You're not getting to get any relief when you get to the bullpen. If you're the Rays trying to attack late. Another close pitch at the plate. Yeah, that pitch was outside. You know, that's not something where A.J. Ellis is going to, to, to frame and say, look, Paul, I, I need a little help here. There have been some close ones so far. Matt Joyce showing a good eye there. And now a 2 2 count. Swung on, missed. Fourth strikeout for Frankie. Now, how often do we tease when someone is coming to the bat that a pitcher is hitting? Frankie is hitting 405. You're going to see him at the plate in a moment.
Bottom of the third. Zach Ranke swinging at the first pitch. Foul toward right and out of out of play over by first base. Comes in hitting 405, 15 for 37. He actually owns three career home runs, none this year, but has really made an effort swinging the bat for a pitcher. That's unheard of, especially a pitcher this good when he's pitching. Well, like I said earlier when he was out on the mound, very athletic. I mean, you watch him running the bases as well. I've seen him go in and break up double plays. When he's up at the plate, it's not just one of those things either where the other pitcher, oh, yeah, we got a pitcher thrown. They're very aware of the success he's had, so they're grinding on him, and he's still having an opportunity to get base hits. Look at that. When do you throw a pitcher something like that? <laughs> it's usually just, hey, I'm, here comes a fastball. Go get him. We're going to hear, hear from Don Mattingly in a, in a moment about how well, Zach is pitching, obviously, but he, in uh, St. Louis on Monday, Granke was one for two. His line drive single in the seventh drove in what proved to be the winning run. There's a strike. Both. That's a 2-1 off-speed pitch to the pitcher. Again, it, this isn't your conventional pitcher. I mean, look at this. I mean, it's not the fastball. You know, Granky's laying off that because, hey, that probably was off the plate. Held off. He, he rarely pitched until he went into high school. He played shortstop. Granky played some first base. And this is... When he won his 100th career game, he did it at the plate. And, and notice that was not a fastball. That was a darn good curveball, low and away. And like I said, he, he's just a very good athlete. A little close. And now it's a 3-2 count. I, I'm just amazed at the, the amount of off-speed pitches that Hernandez has thrown, Granke. This is a guy that's got a lot of movement on his fastball, but... And he's still, quote unquote, trying to trick him. The 3 2 to Zach Ranke. Well, when I mentioned that he played some first base, his idol as a youngster is Mark McGuire, who is, of course, the Dodgers, now the Dodgers batting instructor. But by his senior year in high school is when, there's Mark looking on, when Granke became a pitcher and incredibly won the Gatorade National Player of the Year. He went 9 and 2, so. That great athlete from at the plate to on the mound, and he has found his place. Big six year contract given by the Dodgers. And he works a walk. A terrific at bat for Granke as a batter, and we asked Don Mattingly about how he's doing out on the mound. No, Zach looks good. Uh, ball's coming out, uh, using the breaking ball, change up. So, uh, just try, hopefully he can keep his pitch count down and go deep into this thing. Well, all Dodger fans want to know, Hanley Ramirez, Matt Kemp, when do we see him again? Well, Hanley's, you know, progressing, Matt's progressing, um, doing more and more every day. So uh, I would expect the, to see Matt doing a lot more baseball activity here in the next, uh, you know, four or five days and then getting into some playing. Uh, and Hanley obviously played last night. We think he's getting closer and closer every day, so we'll see. And shouldn't you be smiling more the way your team is going, right? You should be chuckling with us, Don. <laughs> uh, well, I'm happy with the way we're playing, but, you know, day-to-day -day you're grinding it out. And Edward Gonzalez, he's been there for you all season long. Got the, got the home run ball early today. Yes, and uh, like you said, he's been the bread and butter guy that's kind of been in the lineup doing his thing all year long. These other guys have uh, been hurt and back in, and, you know, Puig coming in late and pitching staff doing their thing, but Adrian's been kind of that bread and butter guy all year long. Well, thanks for your time. Keep it going. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks, guys. And Don Mattingly can uh, chuckle or smile a little more. Carl Crawford with a double advancing Granke to third. Well, there's that pitch down and in. Again, to a left-handed hitter. Crawford shoots this down the right field line. We saw that down and in pitch to Adrian Gonzalez earlier in the game. He hit the home run. I, I, I give Now, Crawford got the base hit right there, but it was really the at-bat that Granke had, the eight-pitch walk. That kind of wore down Hernandez right there. And now he faces Puto, who is already one for one. Runners at second and third with nobody out in the bottom of the third. Well, and right now, because the infield is in, Puto's got to get this ball elevated. It's not one of those things where you just pull the ball to the right side, runner scores, move the guy over to third. 
He's looking for something up in the zone. Think left to center. Hernandez gets the strike. Adrian Gonzalez, who has the two-run homer, is up next, followed by Yasiel Puig. Yeah, if you're Hernandez, you got to go after Punto. Well, you have to go after Punto, and, and you've got to get this. I mean, even if you get him, you've still got one out. You've got Gonzalez and Puig coming up. Fouled away. Hernandez has allowed exactly three earned runs in six of his last seven starts and just two in the other. He's already given up two here and he's sweating it out. Crawford runs well at second. That was a tough pitch right there to lay off of, and it's one of those things where, as a hitter, not so sure that you're laying off because, well, that's probably outside or you're just fooled. He's kind of out in front. It's an excellent pitch by Hernandez right there. Didn't get the call. Punto, a 2-2 count. He's 9 for 21 in his career against Hernandez, including the hit earlier. ball left and foul out of play. Well, we talk about two of the big hits. Adrian Gonzalez early in the game. You see where that pitch is down and in. Probably not even a strike. Carl Crawford, it's almost the same exact location. Both left-handed hitters, both those prototypical left-handed hitters that like the ball down and in. gone full to Nick Punto. Punto a much better hitter right-handed this year than left-handed. The trouble for Roberto Hernandez. Four through. Pass second base. Frankie is in. Here comes Crawford. And on a 3 2 pitch, Punto makes it 4 0 Dodgers. Was really an excellent at bat by Nick Punto. Laid off a couple pitches that were off the outside part of the plate. He's looking away because Hernandez has tried to get him out over there. This time, Hernandez gets too much of the plate. He drives it up the middle. Crawford going. Puto continues to have success. Look at the month of August he has had so far. And he's also been money in the field wherever they've played him. And again, that short, big cheer for Adrian Gonzalez. So first base coach Davey Lopes. Again, we, we've had contributions today from Gonzalez, obviously the big two-run shot. But then you get the, offensively, you get Granky with the walk. Then you know, Crawford shoots the ball. Then Punto with the big hit. It's a complete team effort right now. But Joe Madden just wondered, man. You know, he, he's probably, I'm sure he's turned the page, but you look at last night, you got a 6 nothing lead with David Price on the hill. You end up losing that ball game. Now you've come right out here, you've got this. You just got to stop the bleeding somehow. Mattingly can relate to how it was well, early for his team, but Madden said, I got to walk around this clubhouse like we won last night, even though it was a very, very difficult loss for the Rays to take. You got your two best pitchers, your closer, and you can't hold a 6 1 lead. And now it's 4 0 Dodgers. Well, I'll, I'll go back to you know, these two ball clubs. Earlier in the year, the Dodgers, they blew a ton of saves. Last night, the Rays, they blow, and they blew one earlier in Arizona. There's nothing more demoralizing to a team than to come from ahead and lose. That's the way I like to describe it. Spitting it up in the eighth or ninth. 
Let's check in uh, with Ken Rosenthal again. Ken? Well, Eric, you're absolutely right, and their bullpen really has settled down. And let's face it, it's gotten healthier. This is a team that used nine starting pitchers in its first 23 games, and we all thought they'd have this great surplus of starters at the start of the year. We don't even see Billingsley anymore or Josh Beckett. And keep in mind also, Matt Kemp on the DL for the third time. Hanley has been on the DL twice and Crawford twice. Runner going, fly ball center field. Will Myers grabs it and Punto has to hustle back to first. That is out number one. And yes, Ken, the, the, the Dodgers had created that hole. And it wasn't just the first month, nine and a half. It was into June that they had to recover. And as we, as Yasiel Pui comes to the play, they have made up 15 games over 50 days. And this guy gets a lot of credit along with Mattingly Puig for the energy that, that he brought. But I know you've called Mattingly the MVP. I, I, I mean, team. I would be. He's been the one consistent factor. And he could have panicked and got all worked up and started blaming guys, this and that. And he was steady. He was absolutely steady the entire time. He t Puig takes the first pitch. I know that Magic Johnson, part of the ownership here, said it never entered our mind that we were going to make a change about Mattingly, but he he heard the noise said it was tougher than he really thought it would be. Said you really realize where people stand with you when things are going badly. Well in, in the last week uh, you know it's been public knowledge that you know there was discussion between Stan Caston and Don Mattingly and Stan saying look you know what if things don't change we may have to do something. Bouncer short. That's one and a double play. We slow getting down first. <laughs> Hernandez out of it, but the Dodgers do some damage. Timely hitting from Nick Punta. They have a 4 0 lead as we go to the fourth. Go to MLB.com slash Sunday to find special ticket offers. And the Dodgers a hot ticket. Fashionable to be at Dodger Stadium these days. As they are sizzling. Frankie now with a 4-0 lead facing Longoria who struck out. Trying to hold up his swing in the opening inning. Rook, rookie Will Myers. Will bat next. Fouled off. 
Well, Greinke's had great control today. He's working both sides of the plate. When he does miss, he's usually out, not missing over the plate. Then again, you got that four-run lead. Always nice as a pitcher. Here he is, Rick Honeycutt. Longoria can't seem to connect now one and two. When we talked about it, where does he go? He goes off the plate. He's down, not missing over the heart of the plate. Pitchers are going to miss. There's no question about it. But when you miss out of the zone, you have a little more longevity. Looked like the pitch that got him first time up when he went after it. This time he holds up and it's two and two. Three and two. See, just stays right out there, Granky does. Doesn't give in. He has said that 95% of the hitters you can get out if you throw your best pitch, but there's that 5%. It's like trying to stop Kobe Bryant. They're guys that, no matter what you do, the Cabreras, they're going to get you. Longoria could be in that category. Skies this out of play. You just brought up a hitter, but Miguel Cabrera, and you know those of you at home who have access to the internet, if you can pull up the at bat that Miguel Cabrera had against Mariano Rivera you last said, night, it's one of the best at bats I've ever seen in baseball. Wow! Fouled a couple off his leg, his knee, and <laughs> bottom of the ninth, two and out, and then he hits a two-run shot, home run. I mean, look at that! I mean, that just that's silly stuff. He's within six of Davis for the home run lead. 35th home run coming today. And he had three hits. Longoria toward left center field. Ethier watches it bounce off the wall. On a 3 2 count, he gets to second. Let's get a game break. MLB Network Studios and check in again with Matt Vasquez. Matt? Chris, Twins and White Sox, Justin Morneau struck for two home runs, including a grand slam yesterday in the doubleheader, and he's done it again today. Three-run job. Twins have taken the lead on an Oswaldo Arcia home run. 4-3 Minnesota in the third. Back to you and E.K. Thank you, Matt. And here is Will Myers. Struck out in the opening inning. White Sox, very, very disappointing. Finally sending Rios away in a trade to the Rangers. They've had some injuries and, and offensively that just never got going. And, and one of the staples for that White Sox ball club last year was defense. And they've really been at the bottom of the league all year long. You know, remember, Will Myers came up in his last at-bat with a runner on second, unable to come through. Look at those numbers. 25 runs batted in already. So he uses that first at bat to study the pitcher that he's not a film guy. I wonder what he learned from Granke <laughs> the first time around. Well, you know, that, that philosophy is very Ted Williams-esque. You, you read Ted Williams' book, The Art of Hitting. First at bat, you try and get as much knowledge as you can. You see, that just fools him right there. And there are going to be pitchers that you just do not pick up the ball against. His major league debut June 18th hit a grand slam off CC Sabathia and it was at Yankee Stadium. His first home run ever. One of those special moments. He's a special player. Well, very calm, very sure of himself. You know, almost a, a, a cocky standpoint, but it's it's a as Joe Madden says, it's a very disarming cockiness. It's almost kind of you hear him talk, it, you kind of chuckle when you walk away. He said, Did he really say that? <laughs> High, straight up. Ellis looking for it and has the catch for out number one. Hey, Ken, your thoughts on Will Myers? Well, I was talking to Evan Longoria yesterday, and he said of Myers, let's just say he doesn't lack confidence in himself. And he will say things that are so bold and so outrageous, his teammates will be half astonished and half in stitches. Case in point, last Saturday night, Tie game against the Giants, ninth inning. The Rays failed to come through in an opportunity where they had men on base. Myers turns to the Rays trainer, Ron Porterfield, and says, leave it to Will. Next inning, 
Myers hits a walk-off RBI single. So, Eric, here's my question to you. How many times did you ever turn to teammates in your dugout and say, leave it to Eric? Can't say that I honestly ever did that. <laughs> Didn't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> Here is James Loney. Had good years with the Dodgers, but is starring for the Rays. Has settled in comfortably. 29 years old, three hits last night, hitting over 300 and continuing to play excellent defense. Just a solid player. I I mean, he reminds me a lot of a, of a guy that played in the 90s, Mark Grace. Now, he hasn't reached that stature, and, and Mark Grace had a wonderful career as the Chicago Cubs and Arizona Diamondbacks first baseman. But a guy that will drive the ball the other way, will hit you doubles, will get the big hit when you need it. You know, and last year with the acquisition of Adrian Gonzalez and, and James Loney, just you know, they had hoped that he would develop a little more power. Just never really realized that. Really realized that. You like that? You kind of rolled, Smith here. rolled everything together there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, what, six and a half years with the Dodgers. Remember, he we went to Boston, but it was kind of a sneaky, clever signing by the Rays. Kind of fit their program, their profile for what they're trying to do. We congratulate his wife, Nadia. They, they had their first child, a baby boy named Jordan, just about three weeks ago. He was a little nervous yesterday coming back to Dodger Stadium as a as a member of the Rays. They had a nice sign billboard up yep. there. Welcome back. He wasn't nervous at the plate, though. As I said, he came up with three hits and drove in a couple of runs. Well, and you can tell he's feeling confident. That's a 3-0 swing right there. He had the green light. And in his career, he has a home run off Granke and nine at-bats. Uh, James Loney, just a solid guy. Very good guy. Got to know him a little bit here while he was playing for the Dodgers. And he holds the Dodger record of all the great Dodger hitters for the most RBIs in a single game. Tied with the great Gil Hodges, first baseman for the Brooklyn Dodgers. There's the strike from Branke. Junel Escobar is on deck, followed by Kelly Johnson. Rays need to cut into this lead after they blew a lead, a 6-1 lead last night. They come in trailing the Red Sox by two. Boston will play later. The Dodgers a five-and-a-half game lead over the Diamondbacks in the National League West. That could be one of the tipping point at bats you talk about later. Should the Rays be able to produce a rally here for Loney to work himself on? They have two on with only one out. A chance to make Granky work a little bit more here in the fourth. And I think Granky was careful with Loney because now what you do, you put runners on first and second. You're a ground ball away from getting out of the inning. We appreciate Don Mattingly joining us. We'll be talking with Joe Madden here coming up in just a little bit. So here is Escobar. Grounded to third, his first time up. 30-year-old from Cuba. Yasiel Puig, his story, much said about how he got to the States and the Dodgers from Cuba via Mexico. For Escobar, landing in the Florida Keys from Havana back in 2004. Three days in a cramped, a small boat with... 35 others and has worked his way to the big stage. AJ Ellis wants to discuss things with Granke and a 2 0 count. Well, this Tampa Bay Ray ball club having very good at bats right now. And Joe Madden described them as a sort of swarming offense. And what they do is they work counts. They make the pitcher have to labor out there. They don't want to go up there and just strike out. Everybody in that lineup, you know, they'll shorten up. They'll take the ball the other way. As you mentioned earlier, Chris, it, Joe Madden said it. This is probably the offense that he's been the most excited about in his tenure. There's Joe. Is so it kind of that swarming offense, kind of what the Dodgers do and did last night? You know, yep. The Dodgers are one of the, they're down at the bottom of the, the majors in home runs Power. hit, yep. yet they produce runs. And the Rays are going to have to do that if they hope to rally here. In there for a strike. 
You know, you mentioned the Rays ball club. Right now, they're in a little bit of a lull, especially after that hot stretch. But, you know, they're in a situation, too. They're getting Matt Moore back, Alex Cobb. There you see Alex Torres warming up in the bullpen. Could force Hernandez out of the rotation. Yeah. Chopped towards third, Uribe. Second, high at first, and he's safe. Ruby does a nice job. Ball just up a little bit. See Adrian Gonzalez trying to get that foot down. Okay, Looked like Schumacher yeah, didn't. The ball didn't come. He didn't grab it out of his glove cleanly. Of course, yeah, wasn't a smooth transition. Granky wanted it. Schumacher in at second for the regular, the everyday second baseman Mark Ellis. Being given the day off, and there's how high Gonzalez had to go. To get that ball close at first, but the the appropriate call by Doug Eddings. Two on and two out. Runners at first and third for Kelly Johnson. Well, but, I, you've got to be careful here with Kelly Johnson because he can get a hold of one and make this a one-run ball game with one swing of the bat. Now you can be careful here, and even if you end up walking him, or you can go after. Jose Molina on deck. You just don't want Johnson to hurt you. He grounded out his last time. Back to Granke, who's right there. Floats it over to first, and Zach is out of trouble. And the shutout remains. The Dodgers coming to bat with a 4 the lead. we've learned making tires for a range of conditions inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Sunny Southern California day as Andre Ethier steps in. Struck out swinging his first time up against Roberto Hernandez. We'll be talking with manager Joe Madden here in just a few moments. In there for a strike. Ether has five seasons with 20 plus home runs, including last year, but so far, not a lot of power. Just seven. 
As he fouls that off, the home run hit by Gonzalez was just the 94th for the Dodger team, ranking in the bottom five. Right. Offensively, Andre Ether hasn't you know, come close to what he's done a few years ago or what he did a few years ago, the 30 home runs or the other year with 100 RBIs. But At first, Loney can't stay with it. Zobra's throw is late. Zobra's tried to make something happen. But Ethier gets on. Maloney does the job of knocking it down. Zobris gets a hold of it, but Hernandez just late in covering the back. Now he doesn't get over there. And really, initially, he should be breaking over to first because if Loney does feel that cleanly, I'm not so sure he would have been able to get up and beat Ethier to the back. Really, that's a, a fault of Hernandez. Or just watching and... And again, Hernandez is probably moving as fast as Hernandez can move right there. Scored a base hit, and that gives Juan Uribe a chance. He'll be followed by Skip Schumacher and then A.J. Ellis. Leadoff man is on for the Dodgers in the fourth. Swung and missed. Hernandez could be a guy pushed from the rotation when Moore and Cobb are healthy. Of course, Archer, who will be... At least the manager said he thought that he'd be healthier after that, that tightness in the forearm. Well, and remember right now that they're in a four-man rotation with days off. So one of them comes back. You still don't have to bump anybody. But when both are back, Cobb and Moore, somebody's going to have to give up a spot. They've had quite a few days off lately have the Rays. There's Schumacher. But they're going to have to get into that five-man rotation when they... Return home. Base hit left field. Runners now at first and second. We caught up with Joe Madden and asked him about how his team would have to try and rally just like the Dodgers did against his team last night. We have to start swarming pretty soon. I think he's pretty good. I mean, although we have his pitch count way up there, and I think he's in the mid-70s. Uh, we're getting the guys out there. We just got to get that big hit when it's necessary. And that swarming offense, who has to ignite that? Uh, normally, it really is uh, the entire group normally. Uh, Zobris on the top of the batting order. When he hits leadoff, we normally have a pretty good record when he does that. Matty Joyce has been better. Uh, but I think it starts with those two guys. Like right there, a great opportunity. Uh, KJ up there, right? Uh, runners on first and third, two outs. I kind of like that also. But it's, uh, it's a group effort. A little over six weeks to go, Joe. Alex Cobb, Matt Moore, where are they? Close. Uh, Alex threw yesterday in Port Charlie, did really well. Uh, I think four plus 70 some pitches, so he's on track to pitch next week at home. And then uh, Maddie's going to throw a uh, bullpen tomorrow. We'll know more after that. Once we get him to throw on the mound, regular bullpen situation, let it go, and then see how he feels following that, then we'll know more about him also. And finally, Desmond Jennings, uh, your leadoff hitter, center fielder, likely to return soon? Hopefully. Um, we thought it pretty much would be the minimum DL stay, probably like that 15-day thing. I uh, just banged up his knuckle a bit on a slide. He stole a bag, led to the game winner, but uh, we, we suffered for a couple weeks for it. Nice to see you back in Southern California. Thanks, Joe. Nice and warm, baby. All see right, you guys very well. Thanks. <laughs> All those years as part of the Angels before getting his managerial shot. And there's a meeting on the mound with Hernandez, and he was talking about the pitch count at Granke, part of their philosophy. Granke up to 77 pitches through four innings and 61 now for Hernandez, who's on the spot with runners at first and second, and Skip Schumacher at a 2 0 count. Well, probably more important today for the Rays to elevate the Dodgers' pitch count. The reason I say that, remember last night, Chris Capuano did not go deep in the game. The Dodgers, four plus innings from their bullpen. So they are a bit taxed. Left field and bounces for a base hit. The runners will hold. Kelly Johnson kept it in front of them. And now the bases are loaded. Schumacher's two for two. Well, watch this. Kelly Johnson, the left fielder, comes in and he acts like he was going to catch it. It throws Andre Ethier, the runner at second. He was about halfway. You take a look right there, Andre Ethier. He's freezing. I don't know. Am I going to catch it? I don't know what's going to happen here. Now watch Andre Ethier. Look at this. He's fro He thinks that he may even catch it. He's got to get back. It's a great job by the outfielder. Again, one of those situations where you try to decoy the runner. 
He certainly sold me. Bases loaded now for A.J. Ellis. Ellis grounded to third, first time up. Alex Torres warming in the bullpen for the Rays. There's no room to put A.J. Ellis. It's already 4 0 Dodgers. And A.J. Ellis, 2 for 11 with the bases loaded this season. And he's one of the more patient hitters. He, he takes a lot of pitches. He does. And, and what he's got to do as a hitter right now, you look for the ball up in the zone. You want to stay out of the double play right now. You're thinking just sacrifice fly. Shoot it to right center. Anything else is gravy. When you get greedy as a hitter, that's when you get yourself in trouble. The 1-0. It's now 1-1. One one. Jamie Wright also getting loose. As the pitch count goes higher here. Well, you see this ball just dive out of the zone. It's down. As I said, as a hitter right now, as we see Jamie Wright, the former Dodger, getting loose down there. As a hitter, you want to get your eye level up. Get that ball up in the zone. That's two pitches that are that are down. And even if you hit those, you're going to ground it. You've got to hope you don't hit it at somebody. Hernandez ahead in the count. Zach Ranke, look out. He's on deck. <laughs> That's Captain cleanup. Ranke's walk last time helped the Dodgers add a couple more runs against Hernandez. The one two. Well, this is a pitch to get him off the plate to set up the next pitch. Now, now, typically and predictably, what's going to be coming next is something down and away, down in the zone. And if you want to freeze a hitter right now, you come right back in there. Right back in there if you want to freeze him. Ellis, a catcher. I'm sure aware of the concept. High center field. Will Myers under looking into the sun. Runner tags. Run scores. Andre Ethier makes it five to nothing. Uh, they sacrifice fly RBI. 39th RBI of the season for AJ Ellis. He did what he had to do. Right, but that's the wrong play right there. Will Myers has to understand he's not going to throw anybody out at home. He's got to be lining up and throwing that ball to the shortstop to prevent the runner to go to third. And in the shortstop then. Can also prevent the runner go to second. You keep the double play in order. There's no play at home there. You know, and that's youth right now. You watch those runners. You watch the base runners. They're both at first and second. They're tagging as well. And Ellis excited after those two hacks. He was down and away. Got two strikes on him. Don Mattingly is coming out and pointing. So we're talking to the umpire. The Rays are appealing the tag. It looks like the Rays. Called out left early is what. Well, I, I, I think we can take here. a look at that. Let's take a closer technology. look. Technology. Now you, you see it's the runner at second now. And we got Andre Ethier there at third. So the runner at second goes out of our picture. Yeah. It's certainly not. Now that's not. It's not Ethier. Uribe was the one that was called out. So it was the runner at second base. They're saying that he left early. Uribe. We see Hanley Ramirez and Puig going and giving him the business right there. So two outs in the inning after being called for leaving early. Runner at second with Granky batting. And say, here it is. Here, here's your rebate. Watch. Wow, that's a bad call. That is not a. That's a bad call. That's not even a good. Well, that's not even close. And it looked like you know Mattingly wanted to argue the hidden ball trick because the Rays actually ran over and pointed it ah. out to the umpire. And your is not sure what happened. Well, it wasn't because he left early. That's for darn sure. And it has to be the hidden, hidden ball, ball trick, trick because yep. the, the Ray infield, the Ray infielders all came together. They had something going on. 
after we were watching Ethier score the run. Mattingly came out, so he, I think he was ready to argue what you said. He didn't right. leave early, and they said, here's what happened, and he, he accepted the description. And we'll hopefully have a closer look at this. Meanwhile, Granke with a 2-1 count, two-out runner at second. And a 5 0 Dodger lead. Granky up there battling again. Remember that walk that he had to start the previous inning, the second, I should, excuse me, the third, eight and, pitch at bat. And it was interesting, Eric, because Hernandez had issued only nine walks in his last nine starts. And here you got the opposing pitcher working him for a walk that created a couple of runs in that inning. Chops it at third, and Longoria will throw out Granke. And the hidden ball trick apparently helps the Rays get out of further trouble. But right now, it's 5 0 Dodgers going to the fifth. Trail five nothing and come up with some creativity to help them get out of some trouble. We'll show you that in just a few moments. But first, Jose Bolita stepping in to face Zach Branke, the 29-year-old, who is trying to improve to a 10 and 3 record. And as manager Joe Madden pointed out, the 77 pitches already. But is not allowed to run. Hernandez due up second in the inning. We'll see a pinch hitter. It's going to be Ryan Roberts. And then back to Zobras, top of the order, who Madden said was a guy who could ignite this race team and create a rally. Granke suffered the left fractured clavicle back on April 11th against San Diego. There's a bouncer that Schumacher gobbles up. He's 
done well with that. Let's check that hidden ball. Eric, take us through exactly what happened with Uribe. Well, you see Loney has the ball, and he's right above the pitcher's mound. There you see James Loney right there. Okay, now he's got it. Uribe over here on the left. He's got his head down. Now Escobar has the ball. He throws it over to Longoria. So now the ball's over at third base. Longoria has it. Nobody knows Uribe, third base coach. Nobody's aware that Longoria has it. Uribe steps off. Boom. And, you, you know, it's a great job by the Rays. But Toward right field, and it drops in where Puig is on top of it. Ryan Roberts is on with one out. Well, you see Uribe standing at third base. You know, third base coach is there. Now Longoria has the ball. Now watch Uribe. You watch that. The foot comes off, and Longoria's right there. But most important in that entire play right there, Angel Hernandez, the umpire, knows exactly where the ball is. He's able to make that call. And so many times, the umpires, they're not always sure where the ball is. And as a player, sometimes you'll say, Hey, Angel, I got the ball, so just watch me. Watch me, Angel. Got to give credit. That's a great job by the umpire, including specifically Angel Hernandez in that situation. There was one other attempt this year in Major League Baseball, and all of Major League Baseball that failed, so it's the first successful hidden ball trick pulled off, and Hernandez, Angel Hernandez right there to call it. It's something that the Rays work on specifically, practice and put it into perfect action there. Base hit up the middle. After the pinch hitter Roberts gets on, Zobris delivers. So two on and one out. Right fielder, number 20, Matt Joyce. Or Matt Joyce. Well, here's that swarming coming on. As you mentioned, Chris, starting this inning, Zach Granke was at 77 pitches. It's a warm day today. It's nice, but it's warm. He's been out there laboring. Nothing's been easy for him. Dodger bullpen was worked last night. These are the guys you want at the plate if you're the Tampa Bay Rays. Joyce, 7 of 17 attempts against Rankies. Hit him well, including a home run, as we mentioned. 14 home runs this year for Matt Joyce. He's driven in 34. Frankie's last start, he worked into the sixth inning. That was Monday in St. Louis. Toward center field, Ethier has it for round number two, and the runners stay at first and second. Close at second. Andre Ethier has the play in front of him and tries to get the runner at second. Close, but easily in there. Nevin Longoria, one for two, stepping to the plate. We check the Fox Sports one pitcher comparison. Well, the big home run by Adrian Gonzalez and then the two RBI hit by Nick Punto. Really the difference. Zach Greinke's been in trouble a little bit, but he's been able to navigate his way out. In there for a strike. Rays have the, the right hitter up there if he's going right. Who could, with one swing, make this a two-run game? Well, Longoria and Will Myers, you, what you want to do right now, get that ball, obviously, in the gap, keep this line moving. Frankie going right after him at all in two. He does have a home run off of Granke in his career. Granke can afford to be aggressive. He's, he's pitching out there with a five run cushion. Meeting on the mound, the Rays first and second with two out. They're 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position today. And when they did get on that tear in July, of course, they had the great starting pitching, but they had that swarming offense. Key hits at the right time. Two out hits, runners in scoring right. position. 
Well, and they're third in Major League Baseball in hitting with runners in scoring position. St. Louis Cardinals way out in front of everybody. Then you've got the Detroit Tigers and then these Tampa Bay Rays. The 0-2. Frankie's going to get out of it. That is out number three. The Rays fail again to get anybody on the scoreboard. Meanwhile, Nick Puto, who was a hero on Friday night, he's got the Dodgers rolling again today. And we'll get another look at him as the Dodgers with a 5 0 lead over the Rays, bat at the bottom of the fifth. Carl Crawford, one for two, facing the new pitcher, Jamie Wright, the one time Dodger. Ray's starters, by the way, have failed to go five innings in four of the last five games, including today. Well, and that's been one of the staples of their success as of late. It's been that starting pitching. One of the things, Matt Moore, right around the corner, Alex Cobb, two excellent young starters. I mean, regardless of what the Rays do, what they've done the last couple of games, I, I really like where this club's headed, and you know, I like where they're positioned, especially in the, in the American League East, and what they've got in front of them. But I think it points to Eric; they they need the well-pitched game. I mean, you can say that about any club, but they don't have the kind of offense, even though it's a swarming and timely hitting offense that can easily dig out. Not that many teams do, but we've seen the Dodgers come back as they did Friday night from a five-run deficit. Right, but I, I think with the Rays, their depth of starting pitching, assuming Cobb and Moore are healthy the rest of the way, you're running four or five guys out there that every night you've got a chance. And the way David Price is thrown, I don't know if there's been a a better starter in the last in the last month. Jamie Wright with a 2 and 1 record, ERA at 
and 20 of his last 23 appearances scoreless. And he gets Crawford on a call strike three. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser and sponsored by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Beautiful summer day at Dodger Stadium. Second oldest ballpark in the National League. Third oldest in baseball behind, of course, Fenway and Wrigley. Here is Nick Punto, two for two. A role player who has come up big whenever Don Mattingly is called on it. 13th year in the major leagues. A native of Southern California after stops with the Twins, Phillies, Cardinals, Red Sox. He actually carpools in to Dodger Stadium when they're home from Orange County with Skip Schumacher. And he was telling me they the ride in, you know, traffic on the freeways, Eric. You live out here. <laughs> you got plenty of time to talk. And he said we talk a lot of baseball, situational hitting, uh, because we're being moved all over the place. Hey, Field Chris, well. honestly, you think they're talking situational hitting on the ride up? No way. I believe no way. I'm <laughs> I watch him. I watch him bat. Do you talk? Do you talk announcing? I, it depends they, who you're riding with. It depends who's <laughs> in the car with me. <laughs> by the way, this is a Pete Bacheska production directed by Bill Webb. If he was in the car, we'd talk announcing. <laughs> Maybe a little humor. I talk directly with Bill Webb. The award-winning Webby, we call him. Meanwhile, a 3-0 count. Seems like doesn't matter who's pitching. Nick Puto is on base. Next Saturday, August 17th, the premiere of America's New Sports Network, Fox Sports 1, and it all kicks off with the epic battle between Shogun Hua and Shale Sonnen. UFC Fight Night. Live coverage begins Saturday at 8 Eastern on America's New Sports Network, Fox Sports 1. Eric, I know you had your kids here at the ballpark. You're big fans. Yeah, not only of baseball. Here's Adrian Gonzalez with one out and one out. And his two-run homer got the score and going for the Dodgers. Check of the runner. You know, some have questioned Gonzalez's outward emotion as a teammate. And I was talking a little bit about that. He said, well, you know, I'm a mild-mannered, quiet guy. But you don't see me. I don't do it for the cameras. You know, I do it for the team and in the clubhouse, the locker room. When there's emotion to be shown. And again, but but if you as a fan or or a teammate or management, if you're looking that for that from Adrian Gonzalez, then you know you're the one that's not right because that's not what he is. He is somebody that's going to go out, play hard every day. He's going to put up some excellent numbers. You know, he did show some emotion scoring from second base last, last night. Last night, absolutely, yeah, and smiling on that homer today. A four-time All-Star, three with the National League, and. An, Amer an American League starter when he had that full year in Boston in 2011. Just the way this Dodger team has blended together despite all the injuries. And even still, without Matt Kemp, without Hanley Ramirez, a 5 nothing lead. Fouled off. Well, that, that, that's when he got out there. He <laughs> tied, tied the game right there. Hit that double. He's fired up. But then scoring from second base, Fernando Rodney threw the ball into center. He was pumped. Just running and around. It, well, it, it's funny because it, that's something that he's not hes not known for speed. He's not known for being adept on the base pass. But here he scores a winning run, and that's what fires him up. That's what gets him excited. The 0-2. Bouncer Loney on it. And will flip for out number two. Runner advances to second. Let's take a look at the whole ordeal when the Dodgers rally with four in the ninth to win 7-6 against Fernando Rodney. Well, Gonzalez was on second base right there. That looks like a double play. You look at that. The arm's going. Yeah, woo, woo, yeah. Look at that. Throw the helmet. Look at that. Yeah, come on. And see, that's the sort of thing, as a player, the things that you do well, you don't get that excited about. But how many times is he going to get jumped on because he scored the winning run and he scored from second. You see that right there that that's the old 
try and throw a strike. They had the pitch out, or excuse me, the intentional walk set up. Jamie Wright throws that right down the middle. Look at this. He's trying to get a strike. The batter is Yasiel Puig. And Puig, like a statue, <laughs> stood there. Andre Ethier do up next. The fans don't like the fact they come to see the hot shot 22 year old and he's going to be intentionally walked. But today, Puig at the plate 0 for 2. I guess even Superman has to be Clark Kent every once in a while. Well, it's interesting because Jamie Wright is throwing that pitch close enough where as a hitter, you know, you always have that kind of fantasy where I'm going to step out and just launch that thing. And, it, you know, Yasiel Puig. He didn't do anything there. He didn't bite. I mean, look at these. These are absolutely hittable pitches. Absolutely hittable pitches. And Puig didn't bite. Puig is at first. Soto's at second. Two out for Andre Ethier, who struck out and singled and scored a run. Dodgers have led from the opening inning. Knocked out starter Roberto Hernandez. Jamie Wright in relief. Five runs, eight hits for the Dodgers. No runs, five hits for Tampa Bay. Ethier hitting the ball a little bit better in July. And has played, even Don Mattingly noticed his work in center field. He's primarily a right fielder. He's won a gold glove over there. Well, he's done a real nice job playing center field. And what he's done the last two, two and a half months, the numbers haven't been great, but he's been a great teammate. Shops that one towards Zilbrist. Amy Wright and the Rays are out of the inning. We're through five at Dodger Stadium, and the Dodgers lead five to nothing. multivitamin of Major League Baseball and by T-Mobile now your choice is simple T-Mobile Unleash. Will Myers steps in against Zach Greinke. Five nothing Dodgers. Myers is 0 for 2. The last 22 games he's reached base safely but so far they've kept him out. When they called him up from uh, the minor leagues in June I was asking Will about well, did you want to come up a little earlier did you think you were ready and he said you know very candidly yeah, it was just the right time in, in my development I would have liked to have thought I was ready but when I got up here I realized of course he's 
leading the majors in hitting since he's been out. <laughs> but that's the a mature approach for a 22 year old. Yeah, you always think when you're having success in the minor leagues, you wonder, I mean, how much longer do I have to be here? But you don't know what you're getting into, and the people making those decisions. In front of the mound, Granke throws him out, so he's 0 for 3. Our game summary brought to you by Domino's. Oh, yes, we did. And you can say that about Adrian Gonzalez with his home run. Hey, Adrian Gonzalez put him on the board early. And I think more than anything, just the Dodgers coming out and scoring first. They had the momentum, took the momentum in the last two innings of last night's ball game. And it seemed like they were down for sure and not going to win. And then they just kept it going. And if you're on the Rays side, you're saying, man, you got to be kidding me. Here goes that snowball. It's starting downhill and it's getting bigger and bigger. And it's not going to get easier tomorrow night. Clayton Kershaw. Takes the mound for the Dodgers. Five o'clock start, so you know what you get there. Some shadows. A clever move by Mattingly, the Dodgers' Rick Honeycutt, when they called up Stephen Fife to pitch Sunday to give some of those guys like Kershaw Crank a little extra rest. Sent him back down to the minors when they brought up shortstop D. Gordon. Meanwhile, Cranky, when you go back through his history, I mentioned the, the fractured clavicle that kept him out for about a month. His history when you go back through the different teams he was with Kansas City, the Royals, the Brewers. Diagnosed with a social anxiety disorder in 2006, said it mainly bothered him in the offseason when he actually wasn't involved in pitching. He's since been treated effectively with medication for that, says he doesn't have to think about it anymore. But in the game, it never bothered him. It was almost like the most comfortable place that he could be. Well, it, it just, you know, you talk about it, the field of play for many athletes, that's, that's your sanctuary. That's where you can get away from everything. He was drafted sixth overall by the Royals back in 2002. Signed instead of going on to Clemson and pitched under 200 innings in the majors before at age 20 making his major league debut in 04. And since leaving Kansas City at the start of 2011. He's 40 and 14 that winning percentage is the best in Major League Baseball. And there is strike three. James Loney thought this pitch was high and off the plate. It's probably right on both counts right there. You see A.J. Ellis bring that back. James Loney saying, you got to be kidding me there. You know Escobar steps in with the bases empty and two down. Granke nearing 100 pitches. We showed the weather earlier. The sun is out, but mild temperatures and low humidity. Just another perfect day in LA. Yeah, it really is. Field looks good. Eric Hansen doing a fine job at keeping this place manicured. Remember, they had a soccer game yeah. here in between the yeah. last homestand. They had to redo, put in a whole new pitching mound. What's significant about that, Eric, is the last guy to tow the rubber. As we like to say, before they took away was Mariano Rivera. When the Yankees were here. There goes the bat. It's foul. <laughs> we hope everybody's okay down there. I mean, that's a heck of a toss. That's beyond the, the Dodger dugout. It's past third base. Quickly checking to make sure. Oh, got the young lady. There you go. You got the Thick Cure shirt. Thick Cure weekend going on here. The Dodger program raising awareness for cancer, raising funds, money. The best way you can donate to that, you can go to the Dodger website, dodgers.com, and navigate yourself to the Thick Cure site. Make a donation. That nice uh, ceremony last night had a number of the Doctors involved in that coming out here at the ballpark. Fans cheering also for the fan of the stands who's okay apparently. 
Got a great seat when you get that close. That's yeah, that's one of the perils, right? Right. Go tell everybody about that for the next week or so. <laughs> as long as you're okay. Or you, you can show them the bruise. Held off. Should Escobar reach, Kelly Johnson would be next. And you could say the highlight of the day for the Rays, the hidden ball trick yeah. that worked. Yeah. It really, it kept them in this ball game. I mean, not that you like to be five runs down, but it could have lot, been a lot worse. Able to pull that hidden ball trick against on your rebate, where it would have been second and third with just one out. Instead, man on second, two outs. They were able to get out of the inning. Tampa Bay trying to close in on the Red Sox. They've had a turnaround year. Well, they really have. The Red Sox have done a fine job they, offensively. They've been on the top. The pitching's been pretty good. I still like the the Tampa Bay Rays starters. And again, get Matt Moore and Alex Cobb back. I, I, I like their rotation of five. I don't think there's a stronger group in the American League East. I think the Red Sox and Rays are the two teams that get out of there. And the Red Sox with 70 wins already ahead of what they had all of last yeah. year. In the victory to far, but a strike three call. Escobar was thinking otherwise and showing it. And he's been he maybe thrown out of the game here. No, he's still in at the moment. But the Rays are upset trailing here. Five nothing. Continued his push toward becoming the first player to win back to back triple crowns. Leads the AL in batting and RBIs. This home run puts him six behind Chris Davis in that category. The Giants trying to avoid their 14th loss in their last 20 games. Tied at one in the sixth with the bases loaded. Hunter Pence delivers a two run double to give the Giants their first lead of the day. Back to Chris and Eric in Los Angeles. Thanks, Matt. So Joe Matt going to have to use a different third base coach. Tom Foley got ejected after Escobar was upset about the call. Well, look at Jane Floney here. Watch A.J. Ellis. He moves his glove back over the plate. He sells the call. James Loney saying, you got to be kidding me. Home plate umpire Paul Nowert says that's a strike. A.J. Ellis again. This is almost in the dirt. Pull the glove up. Strike three. Escobar does not like it. Again, sells the call. Home plate umpire says that's a strike. There's no way it's a strike. Now, Tom Foley, he says, come on, he's a third base coach. You got you can't call it high, low. AJ Ellis is moving his glove all over. Paul Norris heard enough of it. Ran Ellis. Ran Foley. Juan Uribe with a base hit to center field. 
His second hit of the game. He was the one who was called out on the hidden ball trick. So he'll be close to the base, I'm sure. <laughs> and it brings up Skip Schumacher, who's two for two. Talk about Schumacher and Nick Punto. Of course, Gonzalez with a big home run, but in a lineup without Matt Kemp and without Hanley Ramirez, they produce enough runs to keep the Dodgers rolling. Well, you, you really, obviously, you mentioned that Adrian Gonzalez, a big home run, but, you know, Puig, 0 for 2 today. Andre Ethier, 1 for 3. It's not like there's been a ton of production to go in the lineup. After Schumacher, it'll be A.J. Ellis. It's one of the things about Yasiel Puig, regardless of what he's doing on the base pass at the plate or in the field, he's always smiling and excited for what his team is doing. Clayton Kershaw said he did. He brought not only the, the numbers and the play, his energy helped us get going when we were struggling. Well, and you can't measure that. There, there's no quantifiable way that you can measure energy. And, and that's what he's done. He's brought excitement. Fans come out to the ballpark just to watch him. I mean, he is one of the few guys in baseball that you will just stop and just, I, I got to watch Puig, whether he's playing the outfield up at the plate. You do not walk away from the TV no. when you know he's coming up or if there's a fly ball in his direction. Well, I, I've said it before. The one thing for certain with Puig, he is going to do something <laughs> exciting. Now, whether good? it's good, bad, whatever, that you don't know. But it will definitely be exciting. One-two pitch. Of course, last night he had a couple of throws missing the cutoff man. He was in center field last night in game one of this series and had some problems judging a fly ball. And they've talked to him about that. That's one thing even Davey Lopes and Mark McGuire said we talked to him and he nods but sometimes it doesn't translate out on the field. Well one of the things that I found interesting they feel like he feels that he can do anything. Like he thinks he can catch that ball. Well he doesn't. He thinks he's just going to throw somebody out just by lofting it home. And you see, you know, things happen. And then he comes back here, and races in, and throws the ball high, misses a cutoff. He goes to second. Adrian Gonzalez talking to the young outfielder. And, again, he's been able to get away with it because the Dodgers have been winning. You know, nothing has, quote, unquote, cost them a game yet. Now, those plays have impacts and give up runs. But he's been so far, you know, all things have gone well for him. Gonzalez told me today he was most impressed with the accuracy of his arm. I said, you mean how strong his arm is? I said, no, when he is accurate, it's right on the dime. He just has to know where he's throwing. We need yeah, to make sure. He's, he's totally off by he's got to, He's throwing to a different target 50 right. yards away. We want him to throw to right. the right base, right. the right cutoff man, and we know he can deliver it. Now a 3-2 count here. But, again, he, there isn't anything that he doesn't think he can do. And, and so far, I mean, I'm not sure there is anything that he can't do. Not on a baseball field. Schumacher's at first. And the 3-2, he's going. How long? Kenny had some further thoughts? Yes, the adjustments that Puig has made offensively gives you some hope that he'll also make adjustments defensively and on the bases. A couple of weeks ago, he went through a 1-for-14 slide, and everybody thought, okay, here comes the adjustment. Now he's going to have to adjust back. Well, since then, coming into today, he's hit 424 with nine extra base hits and 59 at-bats. That was his entire slump, guys, 14 at-bats. And, Ken, that graphic, they just put up 11 walks in the last 12 games. I mean, he, when he first came up, a walk was the furthest thing that you'd see from three runner goes base hit left field is drops in front of Johnson and runners at first and second and that will bring up A.J. Ellis A.J. Ellis a kind of a late blooming catcher has become the everyday catcher for the Dodgers done a great job with the staff he's making a name for himself and I mean that in the name Ellis his great-grandmother, back in 1912, had a ticket to go on an ocean liner from Europe to the States, was late on the train, missed that boat ride, which turned out to be the Titanic. 
then years later made it to the States at Ellis Island in the name of Czech ancestry. He couldn't even say it was Trigalovich, but she was in line when they were processing people and the people were backing up and there was confusion and they finally looked at the sign and said, you're Ellis, stamped it, said go on. And A.J. Ellis has lived up to the name ever since. And wants to go into broadcasting, an announcer one day. Oh, he's been real good for this ball club. And as you mentioned, it, it toiled for a number of years. Always thought of, I think, within the organization as a guy, a, a backup guy, not an everyday player, but one of those guys that just grinded it out. He always had a high on base percentage, not a flashy guy, but when you see him day in and day out, you really appreciate how good he is. Back to the pitcher, and right goes to second for one, and they get the double play. Uribe moves over to third. Zach Branke, pitcher number 21, is Zach doing next. Watch Jamie Wright. He waits until the second baseman gets there. And... So they get the double play, and over at third, he's making sure that Longoria doesn't have a ball in that glove. <laughs> Even Angel Hernandez said, I am with you. Two down, runner at third for Granke, who had a fought for an important walk to ignite a rally for the Dodgers. And if you tuned in late, when the Dodgers were threatening, there was the hidden ball trick that Longoria had, the ball in the glove after an out. And when Uribe stepped off the base, the umpire right there, he got him for the out. And it helped diffuse what could have been an offensive explosion. Josh Lukey just called up the other day when Kyle Farnsworth was reassigned. Pitched last night. He's getting loose for the Rays. Now we know Granke can hit Eric, but 104 pitches. He probably gets one more inning. And they're probably hoping it's one of those 10 pitch innings. He's facing the bottom of the lineup. Again, remember that this this ball club last night had to get to the bullpen through over four innings. Could use a day of rest. Roberto Hernandez started. Went five, left for a pitch hitter. Jamie Wright has come on since. Meanwhile, Granke has kept the Rays off the scoreboard. And has an important walk to help his offense. Came in hitting 405. Towards second, Zobrist will get the out. We have gone through six. The Dodgers continue to lead. We'll return to Los Angeles after a word from your local Fox Station.
Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by Budweiser. Zach Greinke, he is 105th pitch, facing Kelly Johnson to start the seventh. Toward right field, and Puig has it for out number one. In case you're wondering, the high for Zach Greinke, 117 pitches June 6th against Atlanta. J.P. Howell loosening up. Former Ray. Back to heard Joe Madden talk about him and Carl Crawford. Yep. So I wish him well, but not in this series. Hope we <laughs> see him in October. George Hendrick, by the way, is coaching over at third. After Tom Foley was ejected on the Escobar balls and strikes, Jamie Nelson coaching at first. Jose Molina, who is 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs, trying to get something going for the Rays against Granke. Tampa Bay, three straight losses. They had been very, very good. In interleague play, the Dodgers had not been good, but this year they've turned things around. Well, they've had some tough losses the last two. They lost in Arizona, one run ball game on Wednesday, and then last night, David Price threw a heck of a ball game. Toward left field and drops in. Crawford over there. Molina's at first. Talk about a hot summer and teams. Especially the Dodgers with that payroll and great expectations after the sluggish start, but the best team in baseball since. And the Rays, sizzling July, where they're starting pitchers. We're going through innings and having success. And of course, the rookie Yasiel Flea and Will Myers coming up in late June and in the cleanup spot, although he's yet to do anything today. Luke Scott, the pitch hitter, with a runner at first, and you wonder is. Slow as Molina moves. If Joe Madden might put a pinch runner in there, try and keep a big inning, at least the hopes of a big inning alive for the Rays. <laughs> well, if anything, Adrian Gonzalez, you don't want, as your first baseman, you want to give yourself a little range. You don't need to hold Molina on at first, especially with the left handed hitter Scott up. You also go out and talk to, to Granke, give JP Howell a little more time down in that bullpen to get loose. Honeycutt watching Granke closely here. 0 for 1 last night with Scott in a bit of a slump. He was hitting 274 in July. He's gone 3 for 30 since. Now, I don't understand why Gonzalez would be holding Molina on at first base. Make more sense to play behind him, give yourself some range. Molina's not going anywhere. Ben Zobrist is due up next. Got a runner at first and one out. And that runner, Jose Molina. And here comes Don Mattingly. Well, you mentioned 110 pitches. You, you said the high 117. Granky's done a great job. Gets out of here. You bring in Howell. But remember when you asked Don Mattingly about what kind of things concern you, even though this team is playing well, he said, I'll tell you the one thing is the, the usage of the bullpen. Well, and, and specifically, there's a few guys. Kenley Jansen. Belisario and Rodriguez, all, all of those guys have are up there in, in games as far as relievers, and those things take its toll. You still got two months to go, and while you want to be playing great baseball now, you want to be playing your best baseball come October and have all your guys help. We're inside of 50 games. The Dodgers have reached a season high for them of 15 games over 500, and that's going to be it. For Granky. A well appreciated pitching performance from Zach Granky.
Six hits, did not allow a run, seven strikeouts and only one walk. And, of course, the runner at first with Luke Scott batting. His responsibility is J.P. Howell, who was with the Rays from 2006 to 2012. Takes over 2-0 this year. Sparkling ERA of just over two. And worked two-thirds of an inning last night. Facing Scott. Scott with some power, nine home runs. He's driven in 39. The Rays have 15 come from behind wins, but four runs three different times. The biggest deficit they've overcome. And here they trail 5 0 in the seventh. No, but again, all, all they have to go back to is last night's ball game and watching the Dodgers come back from a six to one deficit going into the eighth inning. David Price out of the game. And what seemed improbable, the Dodgers were able to achieve it. This Tampa Bay ball club, they they are a darn good club. They do not quit. They will continue to battle, battle, battle. You can't discount them. The Dodgers feel if they get to Kenley Jackson, yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's as automatic as automatic gets. Yeah, the way he's been throwing lately. Ronald Belisario getting loose for the Dodgers, who appear loose. That's another thing about this team, Eric. When you're around him, they, I mean, I know things are going well here, but they have, through injuries and the rough start, very comfortable with each other in their situation. You see Gonzalez now not holding the runner at first, playing off the bag, giving him some range. And Luke Scott goes down. J.P. Howell comes in, gets the strikeout. Now this is a breaking ball, bounces. A.J. Ellis does a nice job of keeping it in front. You see him drop down to his knees and not trying to catch the ball, just trying to keep it in front of him. A lot of young kids, young catchers, always trying to catch that ball out of the dirt. And all you're doing is just trying to keep it in front of you with a runner on base. Ben Zobris with a couple of hits. And again, if you heard Joe Madden chatting with us earlier when he talked about the swarming offense, he said the guy that could ignite it would be Zobris. And Desmond Jennings, who bats in the leadoff spot, plays center field, will be back soon for the Rays in their homestand after this series. The Rays have Monday off and they're home against the Mariners for three and the Blue Jays for three. Two and all. Should he reach Matt Joyce, the scheduled hitter? Tomorrow's starter, Clayton Kershaw. Zobrist has hit safely in now 12 of the 13 games he's played recently. And waits on the strike, taking all the way. More bullpen activity. Bouncer that is grabbed by Puto the flip. Schumacher turns and they get the out at second. It wasn't pretty, but they got the out and they're out of the inning. Zach Greg, excuse me, Zach Greinke, with a shutout. The Dodgers a five nothing lead.
AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. And our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Everything we've learned making tires for a range of conditions inspires what we roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Cesar Ramos is in the pitch of relief for the Rays. ERA four and a half. He's got to save a record of two and two. And he'll be facing Carl Crawford. The one time Ray who has struck out twice, doubled and scored. Dodgers led from the opening inning on the Gonzalez homer. Zach Ranke has made a stand and now with Howell pitching. Trying to secure it for the Dodgers, who hope to get more. Out of the way. Carl Crawford, an option quarterback from Jefferson Davis High School in Houston, Texas, turned down scholarship offers from USC and Oklahoma, Florida, and Nebraska. Originally had signed a letter of intent to play for the Cornhuskers. Ultimately signed with the Rays after being a second round pick. In the 99 draft. Bouncer. Escobar. And that is out number one. Let's get an MLB Network Studio game break in Matt Vesker. Matt? Hey, Chris, it's often said that Chris Davis looks a lot like the Incredible Hulk, Lou Ferrigno. Uh, I think Davis is stronger. Get a load of where this ball lands. Davis is major league leading 42nd of the year. The Birds down a run in San Francisco. Chris, back to you and EK. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, it's not an easy ballpark to hit home runs. <laughs> no, I hit crushing it way back in the center field. So Davis homers, Miguel Cabrera homers today. And for the Dodgers, the Adrian Gonzalez homer on his 16th. With Nick Punto batting. Chris Withrow loosening for the Dodgers. Punto's two for two with a walk score to run. He prefers the shortstop position as opposed to second base wherever they put him. Adrian Gonzalez on deck, but with Hanley Ramirez out, and you heard Don Mattingly say he doesn't think it's you know, he's available to pinch hit. Doesn't think it'll be long term. They want to see how he throws from the hole with that shoulder injury. Matt Kemp Mattingly indicated to us that he's running well and he thinks it'll be a couple of weeks maybe but in long before September 1st of Matt Kemp return. Well and really in each one of those players cases the Dodgers are not in a in a panic mode right now. You can afford to be a couple days late rather than early. Again as well as you're playing right now the object is to be playing well in October and have all your horses ready for that run. After Gonzalez, Yasiel Puig to face Ramos. But first, Punto with a 3 1 count. Toward left center field, Will Myers going back and holds it in. Let's check our. Just for men auto stop foolproof stat and Hanley Ramirez for the moment the Dodgers are doing fine without him but what a difference maker when he's in their record wise. Well and what jumps out obviously is the record the runs you say okay a few more runs almost half a run a little more and half a run more with him. But I think the thing if you talk to Don Mattingly the most impressive thing is his ability to stabilize the defense and you never think Hanley Ramirez oh defense defense but what he's meant to this Dodger ball club playing the shortstop position being out there every single day has been volumes Gonzalez with a base hit toward right center field rolling on the ground and the NCL Fleeg has come out let's take a look at how this happened in Chicago and he has not played in the field since he did pinch hit the other night last night Check in with Ken Rosenthal. Ken? Well, Hanley has a plate over his locker that says, Attitude is everything. 
pick a good one. And he is shedding his reputation as a petulant star, and the Dodgers credit his time at the World Baseball Classic for his newfound maturity. It was there that Ramirez thought, wow, winning is really what this is all about. And he came back, he told me, I'm more mature now, I know what I want. At the end of the night, it's just about the W. He certainly has brought the, the team leadership influence to this team has been a, a positive force for Yasiel Puig, the man at the plate. Now he's had been on the injured list twice already this year, the shoulder, the thumb, not on the injured list for this shoulder injury, but has missed some time and again available to pinch hit when Mattingly needs him. But he thought maybe Sunday he might be able to go in the field. And, and, and Han Hanley will let him know when he's ready. And again, there's no reason to rush things. And you talk about the, the year he's had this season. Next year is his last year under contract with the Dodgers. So the Dodgers are going to have to explore that. Is he somebody that they want to go to long term? Do you make that commitment? And look, uh, this is the place to play in the future. I mean, they're doing everything they can to provide an atmosphere to win here. And smiling as Yasiel Puig as part of that atmosphere. Multiple times trying to defect from Cuba in his story once he was sent back the Coast Guard on a boat. In shorts and t-shirt with his belongings in a. In a bag. Eventually made it. Through Mexico to the United States doesn't talk a lot. About. How he got here. Fouled out of play, but he is glad he's here. Grew up in Cuba on the island's southern coast. Both of Puig's parents are engineers. And uh, Yasiel is said to have a lot of their savvy with computers. They've made it out of Cuba. They now live in Miami. I don't know how good he is with computers, but he can flat out play this game. You Google promising greatness and <laughs> Puig shows up. Runner goes. Nobody covering second. Adrian Gonzalez stealing a base. Well, it'll probably be scored is is indifference, defensive indifference. They weren't holding him on. And I was just thinking to myself, you know, Molina and Gonzalez and it's at home scoring. He they, got the stolen base there. And now they're going to put Puig on again. Remember, he was intentionally walked the last time with the base open. Well, and that's why you don't run in that situation. You've got the left-handed hitting Ethier up. You're going to end up walking him. You take the bat out of his hands. Now, Ethier's a guy you're talking about, Hanley Ramirez. But he's impacted in the lineup in terms of the pitches he sees. Well, he's been better off since Hanley's been in the lineup. And for a number of reasons. It's, you know, he bats behind Hanley. Hanley's been getting on base. It's a lot more opportunities. And it's somebody else to worry about. You know, when it's just Gonzalez and, and, and Ethier in the lineup, you know, Kemp's been out, you know, then it's a little easier to focus on, on, on Ethier. Again, e Ethier just, you know, offensively he hasn't been the same guy he was a few years ago, and that's not to say that he won't, but up to this point that the power hasn't been there. Just hasn't been able to get things going. Two out and two on for Ethier. In there for a strike. In his eighth year with the Dodgers, Andre's been an all star twice. Does lead the team in doubles. Would like to produce another run here against Ramos. Toward right center, Will Myers has it for out number three. We've completed seven. The Rays come out of bat, trailing the Dodgers here in Los Angeles.
All the kids are talking about it. Let's go around Dodger Stadium and take a look at the Fox Sports 1 cam. Let's see fans who are excited about America's new sports network. Fox Sports 1 coming Saturday, August 17th, just seven days away. A 24-hour sports alternative. It looks like we're going to have a change. J.P. Howell had been pitching. It looks like Chris Withrow is going to be the choice for Don Mattingly here. To start the eighth inning as Sean Rodriguez was announced to bat for Matt Joyce. We'll be back here in just a moment. Joyce Withrow, his major league debut June 12th against Arizona. He's been in 12 games and a good ERA, a 1 0 record. Just flat out power. He's going to come at you with hard stuff, gets it up there about 96. Rodriguez sends one toward right. Puig is going back and hauls it in. Just a routine out there for Puig, huh? He runs down that ball. No regard for the fence. <laughs> leaps and I got it. We saw him in Chicago dive and bruise a wrist, go into a wall. He's run into a few walls around ballparks. <laughs> Here is Longoria. The Rays have just not been able to get anything really going in the few opportunities. They couldn't get the big hit with runners in scoring position, unlike what they've done much of the year. Tampa Bay coming in with that three game slide, but they're 66 and 48 overall. They've lost four of their last 10. The Dodgers and Rays will wrap up the three game series tomorrow. Hellickson against Kershaw. And in all the years that the Rays have been around, and they've played in every ballpark and out of the country, 40 different locations. This is the first time at Dodger Stadium. Algoria now at one and two. First trip out this series. The way things have gone so far, they may, may not want to come back here for a while. <laughs> like I said, last, last night's ball game, David Price threw a gem. Looked like they had that thing in the bag. The Dodgers never quit. End up scoring six unanswered runs in the last two innings. How much at this point we're inside of 50 games can a game like that carry over in a negative way for a team like the Rays? Well, I, I think this is a veteran ball club as far as guys with experience. I don't think it carries over. It's frustrating. 
what happens is a, a week or two down the road, if you're still struggling and things don't go your way, then you look back at that game and say, well, that was the game. That's high. Will Myers is on deck, and his reaching base streak is in jeopardy after 22 in a row of getting on base. The 2 2 all the way. Talk about the emotion of Adrian Gonzalez, who has two hits today, including the home run after the dramatic victory last night. An, imp an improbable victory when you figure a Fernando Rodney in a 6 3 ninth inning lead. But that pushed the Dodgers to their 65th win. So in seven weeks, they've gone from a last place team, 12 games under 500, to a first place team, 15 games. Over 500. And still dealing with injuries. Bouncer toward third. The rebound. The out. We asked Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers, about that come from behind win last night. It's just so much fun to be a part of. I mean, we, you know, especially games you kind of think you're out of down 6 nothing going into later innings against David Price, something like that. To do that against a team like that, and uh, it just kind of shows the role we're going on right now. And, uh, I mean, it's a blast. You saw all of us. We act like little kids, and uh, that's, that's what the game's all about. It's a ton of fun. Well, this game, it, it, it's a roller coaster, and it can lift you up, and it can just drag you down. And if you saw this ball club and came to this place two months ago, you'd have wondered what's gone on because it was, it was almost like a morgue. It was just people expecting bad things to happen, depressing. And in two months, because of the Dodgers' patience, with the manager, with the ball club, they turned it around. Here's Will Myers, who is 0 for 3. Struck out, grounded out, popped out. Well, should it, there's an option. The Dodgers hold an option on Don Mattingly's contract after this year. Remember, he, I guess, had requested an extension prior to the year. They said not yet. Here are the Dodgers. Well, if, I, if I'm the Dodgers, look, I, I said it. You know, a couple months ago, if I was the Dodgers, I, I would have picked up Don Mattingly's deal and, you know, extended him possibly. But, you know, they didn't do anything back then. You don't you don't address it now. It'll be addressed after the season. Everybody can kind of figure out where they're at. But I think he's the right person for this ball club. I, I don't think there's any question about that. He's got the respect of the players. He's got the patience. And more than anything... He's got a resume. Now, it may not be a managerial resume, but it's a respect resume because he's done that. He's played. He's gone through all sorts of things. He does relate to players well, and I remember in a subtle way, even Andre Ethier earlier in the year had to kind of, I wouldn't call it a benching, but didn't put him out there and wanted to send a message, and he responded. To the way he handled when his closer, Brandon Lee, wasn't doing the job, it was a big move to go back to Ken Lee Jansen and say, you're our closer. That changed things along with the other factors, Ramirez and Puig, that we've been talking about. No, he, I think he's done a very good job. Man. He's done a wonderful job because it just, it's, he's had to deal with a lot of peripheral things. Will Myers with a 3 1 count from Chris Withrow. Towards center field, where Ethier is under it, will be out. Withrow does the job. Bottom of the eighth, Don Mattingly's team up 5-0 in Los Angeles, celebrating the hot streaking Dodgers.
believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. And by Fox Sports 1, America's new sports network, coming in just seven days. Eric Harris, Chris Myers back here at Dodgers Stadium. Sean Rodriguez, who pitch hit, stays in the game to play right field. Ramos on the mound facing Juan Uribe, who had a couple of hits and also was involved in the hidden ball trick where he was called out at third. Uribe, the first couple of years of his contract with the Dodgers, a major disappointment this year, has played steady at third base and has come up with key hits for the Dodgers. And this is the final year of that original three year contract. His 13th major league season, played with the White Sox, of course, the Giants. That's low. After Uribe, it's Schumacher and A.J. Ellis. Skip. Had quite a day. Playing second base and three for three at the plate. Now two and two. Let me mention what Uribe's done for this ball club this year. And it has been unheralded, but he's played a solid third base. He's been more patient at the plate. He's had some big RBIs, had a big one last night. Hasn't been great, but he's been good. Out on strikes. And it's time for the Burger King play of the game. We talked about the hidden ball trick brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king. Well, you see, Myers throws the ball in. James Loney has it. And he's going to throw it to the shortstop, Escobar, who immediately throws it to Longoria. One, Uribe's got his head down. Longoria's just waiting for him to step off the bag. Boom. Angel Hernandez right on the call. Great job again by the umpire because many a times the umpire is not always focused on it. You've got to let him know. Great job. You could see the infielders after that play. I wondered why they were celebrating with each other when the Dodgers ended up getting the run and then of course we found out later Don Mattingly rushed out thinking they yep. were calling leaving base too early but once it was explained we were able to track it down. Well and, and that was obviously a design play or something that they worked on. In right field and through for a base hit. Four for four for Skip Schumacher. Schumacher just gets it by Zobrist. Schumacher has been hot. Again, plays a multitude of positions. Has had good at bats. And a meeting on the mound. AJ Ellis will come to the plate. Looks like Josh Lukey. Who did pitch last night is going to be summoned from the bullpen here at Dodger Stadium.
Saturday. You'll see it on Fox Sports 1, your 24-hour sports alternative. And here a pitching change with Jack Lukey, who was recalled yesterday when Kyle Farnsworth was reassigned. Gave up a hit and a run last night in the Dodger rally. Joe Madden said he'd been pitching well in the minors at AAA and thought it was a good time to bring him up. He's facing A.J. Ellis with one on and one out here in the eighth. In there for a strike. Ellis back in July in Toronto had a career high game with four hits and drove in five runs. At age 32, almost as if in the organization they just thought he'd always be a minor league kind of catcher, but he's made the most of his chance and it's been a very valuable part of this Dodger team. Well, always thought of as a, as a backup guy. Again, not somebody that's going to wow you, but if you look at him, you look at his numbers, always gets on base, solid defensively, can throw the ball well. He's one of those guys that just grows on you after a while. He finally earned his opportunity, and he hasn't let go of it. From Lexington, Kentucky, and Austin P, and for Skip Schumacher, first four-hit game. We go back. To 2011. Now he just saw who he did it against. He did it against these Los Angeles Dodgers. Maybe that's the reason they signed him. AJ <laughs> Ellis looking for his first hit today. And the Dodger bullpen, you, we've covered every part of when a team is going well. The bullpen, along with the closer, Kenley Jansen, who's been practically untouchable has been terrific getting from the starter to the closer. Carl Crawford will now come to the plate. Let's uh, check it after the strikeout with Ken Rosenthal. Well, Chris, that bullpen could get even better soon. Brian Wilson on the comeback trail through a 1-2-3 inning last night in his AAA debut. Now listen, he's coming off his second Tommy okay. John surgery. Nothing is guaranteed, but he's throwing pretty well, and he cost the Dodgers a million dollars. Now you might say that's a lot of money, but to trade for a reliever, the Dodgers probably would have inherited the same kind of remaining salary, and they would have had to have given up a top prospect. So they thought Wilson was worth a shot, and we'll see him real soon. Well, just relatively speaking, $1 million compared to the, the fact that you bought the, the team for $2.1 billion. That's a payroll a drop, of yeah. 200 and whatever but it is now. It, it makes a lot of sense because what it does is it provides some depth. And Don Mattingly told us prior to the game that Belisario, Jansen, Rodriguez, they have a, they've done a lot of work. They've been in a lot of games. And there's something to be said getting through August and September. You need some depth. You need some other arms. And he's a character, Brian <laughs> Wilson, who would fit right in with the Dodger clubhouse as Withrow is batting with two out and a 1-1 pitch. And the first career at bat, I should say Chris Withrow trying for his cur first career hit in this at bat. And there's the strike. This Dodger team, they took three out of four in St. Louis. They, they took three out of four from the Reds. We know they swept the Cubs and how good they were on the road, those 15 in a row. But... Where do they figure, you know, the, the stretch run here? They World Series, you have to realistically say this team belongs right there with the Braves who are streaking and, and those teams in the Central that you talked about. Well, the, the postseason is different than the regular season. And I think the one thing that separates the Dodgers from a lot of other National League ball clubs is their ability to throw out a one-two punch. And, I, I, and the starting rotation, and I'm talking about Clayton Kershaw and Zach Greinke. Those two at, at the top of a rotation, I'm not sure that anybody else in the National League can match up with that. And when the bullpen was a concern early, that seems to not be a problem and be in good shape, as we just heard from Ken Rosenthal. Wilson can contribute. Withrow on the strikeout in his second major league at bats. The Dodger offense has done its job today, putting up five runs against the Rays. Will it be enough? We're going to the ninth at Dodger Stadium.
Dodgers get a two-run homer from Adrian Gonzalez of Hernandez in the opening inning. Schumacher with four hits. There's Kenley Jansen warming in the bullpen. Zach Ranke was terrific into the seventh inning, shutting down the Rays. And in this three-game series, the Dodgers with a 5-0 lead here after winning last night, 7-6. First show will pitch tomorrow. Another day off for both teams. Uh, the Dodgers, I should say, a day off for the Rays. The Dodgers will have the Mets in for three, and then an off day, and then they go on the road to Philadelphia and Miami. Diamondbacks play tonight. Five and a half game lead for the Dodgers coming in. Red Sox play tonight. Rays trail them by two coming in in the AL East. Joe Madden, he was talking about all those years with the Angels coming back to Southern California. And he heard Dodger Stadium excited about this series, a potential October matchup. So far, the Dodgers have had the upper hand. Former Dodger James Loney trying to get something going here in the ninth. There's the strike from Chris Withrow. Well, like I said earlier, this Tampa Bay Ray team, I think they get to the playoffs. I'm not, I don't know if they win the division, but they, they're at least a wild card. I think mainly because of their starting pitching. Matt Moore, Alex Cobb right around the corner. If they can remain healthy through the, the rest of the season, I think they play into October. That's two and two. The Rays after the day off, home against the Mariners for three and then the Blue Jays for three. They will play the Red Sox at home for three games in the second week of September. Fouled off. After Loney, it'll be Escobar, Kelly Johnson, possibly a pinch hitter. Doing a nice job of fighting off some pitches. You know, even in a 5 0 ball game, sometimes as a hitter, you have a tendency to give away at bats. James Loney up there right now battling. He's walked, looking for his first hit today. Escobar is 0 for 2 with a walk. Kelly Johnson is 0 for 3. That's nice foul. We saw Kenley Jansen. Obviously not a safe situation. Any reason to give him any work? Well, he hasn't thrown. He's only thrown one time since August 4th. One appearance in St. Louis. Didn't get in yesterday. Again, a, he's got a number of games this year, but you don't want to go a stretch where your, your closer doesn't throw for a number of days. The 2 2 pitch to James Loney here in the ninth inning. And Adrian Gonzalez right there. Former gold glover in the right place for the out. Well, Adrian moving those feet over there, catches the ball. Probably would have gone foul. Maybe right down the line. Yunel Escobar hitless today after driving in three runs last night and was involved in a heated conversation after a strikeout that ended up getting third base coach Tom Foley thrown out. And I, I think he had a pretty valid argument. I mean, the pitch was down near the dirt. A.J. Ellis pulled it up, did a nice job of framing it. I don't even know if he did a nice job of framing it, but he, he just tried to pull it up and 
Home plate umpire gave him the call. Escobar not excited about it. Take a look at it here. This was James Loney earlier in the inning. That pitch is out away, not a strike. That one's not a strike. And as a hitter, you, you just want consistency. It just hasn't been a lot of consistency behind the plate today. And there were a few pitches that Zach Cranky threw that were also, you know, that one They're where AJ Ellis yeah. was showing the glove, hey, it's right there, and it was not called a strike. Cranky on his way to his 10th victory. Working into the seventh inning, and the Dodgers on their way to their 14th shutout if they can close out the Rays here. That's among the best in the National League. We saw J.P. Howell. Guys like Belisario and Paco Rodriguez. Ronald Belisario have been some of the go-to guys for Don Mattingly to get to Kenley Jansen, and they've just been terrific. Well, what's happened in the last month and a half, two months, is roles have been defined. You know, and, and it's been defined by pitcher's success out of that bullpen. It's made Don Mattingly's job a bit easier. See, Withrow just fires this ball by Escobar. Withrow's just that power guy. He's that guy that can go Kelly two or three innings. Kelly Johnson, the last hope for the Rays with two down and nobody on. He's 0 for 3. Our producer today, Pete Macheska, director Bill Webb, associate director Aaron Stoikoff. Broadcast associate Jordan Harrison, technical director Paul Harvath, our tech manager Don Esposito. Pre-game show produced by Ethan Kleinberg, directed by Mike Martin, and our statistician Wayne Fiddleman, James Petraka, Dennis Agostino up here in the booth helping us out. We appreciate all the help from everybody on our crew. And the Dodgers' magical season continues. High payroll, great expectations. A rough start. Talk of maybe a change. Mattingly weathers the storm. Some of his healthy players, his healthy stars, return. Yasiel Puig emerges. And here they are in first place. And out away from going 16 games over 500. Eric Karras, I've enjoyed uh, chatting with you. Catching the thrill, the ceremonial pitch from Hideo Nomo. <laughs> Bouncer second. And Dodgers win five to nothing. And take the first two of this three game series. For Eric Karras, our entire crew, Chris Myers. Thanks for watching Major League Baseball on Fox. Let's head to the MLB Network Studios and Matt Vasker. Matt?